Hello viewers, welcome back. It is Super GT here, of course, around Nürburgring for yet another Gran Turismo Sport video. Now this one is a little bit different because I was in the process of recovering from some shoddy races in the Group 2 around Red Bull Ring where my sportsmanship rating was getting absolutely decimated. So my, my sportsmanship actually went down to B temporarily. So I was actually an uh, A plus B rated driver or pig, depends how you look at it. So a lot of these races I'm trying to recover and therefore I'm getting matched with uh, a slightly lower level of player. So we did have someone here who was faster than me and this was pretty much the full extent of the race. Starting second and he had a bad run into turn three, got through into turn four, up into the lead. So you can see, driving the Mazda Rotenza, if you watch my live stream on Monday, so I normally stream the new weekly races on Mondays, I, I drove around this track in this race and I lost to an Atenza. So I thought I'd give it a go and I actually really enjoyed this car. Uh, quite well balanced on the whole, good top end speed. Just a little bit sketchy coming out of the, the slower corners, so it can be tricky to manage, but on the whole I thought it was a very good car. You can see here the gap increasing by lap two, uh, over a second now and then at the end it was a very comfortable victory uh, just under two seconds so hopefully this would be enough to kind of recover my shoddy sportsmanship rating and I could just boost my victories quite easily I actually won like 10, 10 races on this one day just in the process of recovering so we go again you see the the, the, uh, the lineup here you see A plus A and I'm, I'm matched up with BA and DS drivers it, it wasn't even close really. Going to turn one, this is pretty much the full extent of this race. Into turn one, going defensive. It's this weird thing in Gran Turismo where the cars behind seem to get this weird boost off the start and you always have to seem to go defensive into turn one. So going defensive, keeping the position. I've learned that lesson because at Nürburgring I've been lunged quite a lot by not going defensive. People just see the space as an invitation to f send one up the inside fully lit and take your position at the end of that lap you see the gap nearly two seconds and at the end over 10 seconds so it wasn't even a close race at all so i had to do this race like 10 times over just to get my rating back up to something reasonable and that is a, perhaps a problem with the game because sometimes if your rating isn't good you just won't have great races you do you do really need to have an s rating for your sportsmanship now this is where things got very interesting so again uh, a couple of drivers who aren't that great in here like DS um, you know no offense really but you want to be matched with people who are very even so the sportsmanship is even they're S rated but the driver rating is only D so my only real race was against this guy here as I go up the inside of the Russian kind of uh, boxed in a little bit on the apex but I've got an SS driver up against me here and he was faster only by 0.008 as um, he just put me to pole position in this one. And in a race where you're evenly matched, sometimes that can be very crucial. Track position can be very important. And I've noticed that, especially around the Nürburgring. If you're very evenly matched with someone, it can be very hard to overtake. Uh, let's hope though that the, the top end in this car can help. Of course, we've got the two really good overtaking opportunities on this track. I'd say into the chicane at the end, and then into turn one, so both big braking zones at the end of long straights which is normally your big uh, overtaking opportun opportunities on any racetrack so we're going to play the full thing here can we go about beating this Russian and uh, claiming another victory and hopefully having a clean race and boosting once again our sportsmanship rating because I think even though my sportsmanship is now up to S at the start of this race um, is still not the top of S, if you know what I mean. If you look on Kulos Prime, you can check exactly how much out of 99 your sportsmanship rating is. And if it's 99, of course, that's the best. But uh, I think if yours is 80 out of 99, you, you're S rated, but you're sort of a lower S and you still get matched against lower rated S rated players. So you still want to get it above 90, ideally, or 95 to 99. And then you'll start getting matched up against the very top S players and you start getting better races at least that's what I kind of realised from this 
so coming out of the final turn, a bit of oversteer that you can see there, that's the problem I had with this car. Just a little bit sketchy on the exit of the turns. But up against the 911, I think I do have the top end advantage. Uh, so just tucked into the slipstream. It, the, I suppose that straight there isn't quite long enough for the top end to really have a big effect, especially if you're not going to get a good exit from the final co uh, corner just ahead of it. So there are multiple issues with top end. You, ne you need to have a good run onto the straight to make really make the most of your top end. So for t through turn three, looking the apex, this is where the car really struggled and I really couldn't get on the power very quickly. You see the gap just opens up a couple of car lengths as I just have to be a little bit tentative on the throttle because if I was flooring it, the car was just really spinning very easily. So, so downhill through turn six and seven or five and six down towards the hairpin. So you're looking for the kerb on the left hand side and, you, and then you're just going down three gears. So there is the kerb there just as that begins down three gears, turn towards the apex, go out wide a little bit and then cut back for that uh, straighter run on the way out. Coming up through the uh, Schumacher race, I like to dip two wheels onto the kerb and you can take this flat, a hint of a lift this time around. You can see just how much on the limit you are as uh, we uh, actually we're firmly into that slipstream. He thinks about going slightly defensive. I, he definitely knows that I'm there uh, just as he kind of stayed to the left slightly later than he normally would. And then onto the back straight, getting a good exit this time around. I'm actually going to go into bumper cam or hood cam here, just so I can really get a good look at the front of the car. So from chase cam, it's hard to judge the front of your car sometimes. And sometimes I run into the back of the person ahead. Into the chicane, he's gone narrow and he's gone very deep across the grass. He's made a mistake, kind of an unforced error. Or you could say a forced error, as I kind of forced him narrow. But still, he should have braked on time and just braked a little bit late later than he needs to. I suppose if you're going narrow into the corner, you need to brake a little bit earlier to kind of compensate, but he hasn't done that. He's gone way too wide. Got himself a 1.5 second penalty for cutting the chicane. So now this uh, changes the dynamic of the race. I don't really have to overtake him now, but I'll do my best. I mean, it's always best to win it on the track. He served 0.1 of his penalty there, down to 1.4. So he's driving a little bit slower here, very sketchy driving. So. I suppose he's a little bit nervous that I'm right behind him with the big boy Atenza. Bit of a punt through there. So this was the this is the weird thing. It looks like I'm being dirty by pushing him, but I was uh, kind of matching him through the first two laps, and on this lap he kind of started driving a little bit slower. Uh, maybe not deliberately, just uh, just making a mistake because of, because of the pressure of that penalty. I think it might might have affected him mentally. Um, and as a result, I'm trying to drive on the limit and then just driving into the back of him instead. So coming down the hill, into the hairpin, once again looking for that break point, there it is, in we go nicely, and then managing the throttle on the way out, crucial call of this because you're going through the Schumacher S, which is pretty much flat out, and you're going uphill, so your acceleration is really important, and I suppose it's also another good overtaking opportunity into the next chicane after this. So tucked into that slipstream, I, I do have the straight end advantage, and I'm just going to pull over to the left hand side, make him go narrow in, on the way in. I'm going to sweep around the outside, and on the way through, he's just going to push me wide off the circuit, open up the steering. I'm not having any of that. I'm just going up the inside and push him back wide. This is named Sebastian Vettel, because that was a pretty filthy running wide. So he's not going to be happy about that as we wind around the kink into the chicane. I'm going to go defensive. I'm going to stay to the left-hand side. And on the way in, he's just going to push, <laughs> push us both off the circuit, and we're both going to get sent back in time. And as a result of all this silly fighting, first and second have now been lost. We're, we're down to third and fourth. We'll make that fourth and fifth as now a, a Porsche comes through. Into the final turn, well, obviously his dismay is real. Punts me off the circuit. And, well, that's really not ended very well. It should have been a first and a second for both of us, in which order you don't know. But now we're going to be fighting for fourth and fifth or sixth at best. So now getting overtaken by another 911 into the first corner. I think he's served his penalty. He's about a second behind now. Can we go about completing this race? Maybe getting a fourth. I think the fourth place there is the best we can get. Third place is a couple of seconds around the corner. Looking into the, up the inside here, I was a bit angry here. So that was why I went for that silly move. But the Porsche managed just to stay ahead. The Italian just keeping fourth. So this was a this was a silly race, you know. This this is where. Uh, just a little bit of silly fighting can really just lose you so many positions and in a way I could have just stayed behind him and just and just won the race by just staying behind but I tried to attack around the outside he left the space 
the depth of space right, right, uh, right the way around the outside, went for it, just kind of opened up his steering, unnecessarily run me off the track. And if, that's a, if that kind of situation happened the other way around, if I opened up my steering by accident or kind of deliberately, and if I sort of corrected my car and I've run someone off, I'll just back off and let them go back ahead, if it was that clear. But this guy not really doing that, as the Italian getting all, all out of shape, coming out of the hairpin, going narrow into Schumacher race, he's probably going to be vulnerable here as he slows down, going to get, uh, get a nice cut back on the way out. This is probably how it should have happened, you see here. So the Porsche on the inside, uh, give him a car length on the inside, or car width, and he doesn't run me off. That's, that's pretty much how it should have gone on the last lap. Unfortunately it didn't, so temper's boiling over in this one. So winding round the king into the final chicane. Is he going to go for that punt? Luckily, I've got an Italian to kind of, kind of buffer myself from him. So he's going to have to go through the Italian to get to me, and we get through there. Okay, no penalty. And there's one last opportunity to murder Super GT. Is he going to go for it? No, he isn't. And I'm going to come through to finish fourth. Disappointing, really. Uh, I suppose it's a decent recovery to finish fourth. But and and I suppose just to beat the Russian. I suppose that's the minimum requirement after getting punted. But there we go. Uh, his, his, uh, his sportsmanship was actually down to B. Mine stayed the same. And uh, we had a little exchange afterwards. I, I, I kind of just asked why he was doing that. And I won't tell you what that means, but it starts in F and it ends in U. But I won't go into details to exactly what that means. You see here, again, my ratings. A plus S matched up with DS rated drivers. So things really weren't going very well for me today. And this race this race went on a little bit longer than one corner. So there's the first corner, defended it again. Into turn two, the German behind with a nice little just just runs me out. But I go, it gets ghosted and I kind of overtake him back through the, through the ghosted car. And that was the pretty much the full extent of that race. So again, S rated but still a lower type of S so I'm getting matched up with with worse players and in the end well over 10 seconds uh, of victory so racking up the wins so this is the easy way to get victories in this game just punt people off lower your rating and then and then beat people with lower ratings quite easy really so this race I was hoping for another challenge someone who's faster than me but into turn one just gets absolutely sh sent into the shadow realm so unfortunately that race was over very quickly, coming round at the end to finish about six seconds ahead. I was hoping for a good one, and then, well, just get sent to the Shadow Realm. So race win number 46, and finally we get to a proper challenge. So once again another 9-11 here, starting second, tucking into that selector, we've got four GT behind. Interesting to see that car, because I'm not sure how good it is actually around the Nürburgring. Doesn't, I, I don't think the straights here are quite long enough to, for that car to really work and there are a fair amount of braking zones here and the, the Ford GT typically has quite poor brakes so successfully defending my position I think every time I've gone into turn one under attack in, uh, in lap one I've actually managed to keep the position just by going very narrow and just making sure they don't go up the inside just force them to the outside and uh, you can keep your position quite easy as long as you don't get punted of course which that Spaniard found out to much his dismay in the previous race. So now we have a challenge on our hands here. Always good to have a close race. And I've, I've found that in the weekly races, as they are now, uh, the races, of course, go on for a week. People have, a, people have the opportunity to, to perfect their, their race craft, to really understand the lap, understand the car that they're driving, and drive some very fast races. So the quality of the racing, I suppose, it does go up the longer that the race is on because in daily races people didn't really have much time to practice the race or practice the car or practice the track but now you can run the race for multiple days and really learn your trade a lot better so I've really got to grips with this Atenza really actually enjoy it around this track maybe it's not the best car because there are some uh, other uh, cars which are slightly better on the on the leaderboard like the Mercedes AMG, the Subaru WRX, and maybe even the Mitsubishi Lancer, which was used in the uh, the Nations Cup race around this track. So through the chicane, yes, lots of what looks like cutting, but I think that's the that's the line favoured by everyone. As long as you keep two wheels on the kerb, then the game is okay with that. Of course, if it was an FIA race, you'd be you'd be absolutely slammed with 20 years worth of penalties if you did that. You do have to keep two wheels on the kerb. 
Um, in FIA, the track looks a little bit different. So back to this race, things are potting up. It looks like we're fairly evenly matched here. Uh, the 911, I think a little bit more nimble around the corners. I remember the 911 used to be a very, very strong car in Group 3. I don't think it is quite as good as it used to be, but it is, of course, still a contender. And it's Turn 3. We're going quite deep, then get, get onto that apex. Give yourself a good run then through Turn 4. And uh, you can run out a little bit wide through the exit of that corner. And you can see that that's where the gap opens up. That's where this car really doesn't quite excel. Or my driving ability didn't excel, one of the two. Couldn't quite get the car uh, accelerated out of that turn. And then through this one, again, another acceleration zone. Just a little bit tentative on the exit of the corners, but the gap's still less than seven tenths of a second, so it's not a complete disaster just yet. The gap behind up to 2.3. I don't think we're going to have to worry about the people behind, unless, of course, it goes like the race with the Russian and we start abusing each other and start pushing each other off the track. So then through the Schumacher rest, we're taking that nicely. This is where this car begins to come back. So the first half of the circuit, up until, let's say, the hairpin at the bottom of the hill, that's where the other cars are stronger. Then from there onwards, this car, I, th I think it kind of takes over. And uh, the one through Schumacher rest, through that chicane we've just gone through, through this area here, this long back straight, the kink, into the chicane. This is where the, the Atenza comes back into its own, I think. So it's a kind of a, a circuit of two halves, and you kind of notice that, especially when you're evenly matched with someone, you can just see that the person, or each driver, is kind of driving their car to the limit, and uh, you can see exactly where each car is strong or weak. So then, as we come around the final turn, on to lap number three. So half of the race is done. I think We've both matched each other quite well here, and we're both lapping at a very high pace. Uh, lapping into the 56s. Normally in these races I was doing low 57s or mid 57s. So the fact that we are both in the 56s here is kind of uh, indicative of a very high pace. We're both driving very quickly and uh, really making the most of our machines. I suppose as well being behind it is in a way an advantage because you get the slipstream. So down the straights I'm getting kind of pulled along a little bit and that can save you a couple of attempts. A little bit wide there, you see I'm really trying to push and what I'm trying to do here is just try to keep close as I can through the first half of the lap, as I've said, down towards the hairpin and then I can absolutely maximise the car in the second half of the track and try to go for a pass probably into the final hairpin, or chicane sorry. So you see just how close I am, less than uh, three temps near enough two temps as we come through the hairpin. Now this is uh, really where this race could be won or lost. I really need to make the most of this. So you get slightly better traction. We both run two wheels onto that kerb and run the Schumacher S flat out near enough. And this is where things might get interesting. I'm not gonna go for the move here. I'm kinda gonna go for the move where it's most likely gonna work, which is down at the chicane. Now I've been guilty of trying to go for a move into this turn here and then compromising my exit and then not being able to go for a move further around. So this time I'm just going to stick to the racing line you see there and now I've got a really good exit. He goes to the right hand side, he doesn't go defensive, I'm quite surprised about that. I'm going to go up the inside and uh, take the lead. So he actually gives me plenty of space and I've gone through into the lead. So now the tables have turned, it's going to be a defensive race from here to the end. One more lap left to go. Uh, to try to keep first place. This will be the, the finest victory of the of the video because of course the other one's against much lower rated drivers. So I should or I ought to be winning those races. This one a little bit more difficult. This guy obviously very, very quick, very consistent. And uh, lapping in the 56 is uh, clearly a very fast, fast player. So I'm going to try to finish off this race without bottling it normally I do bottle it but I was so composed I think I was very composed in this race I've, I, you know, I ran it so many times I think I must have ran the race near enough 10 times so now that's 40 laps in the same car around the same track so you do get to learn every, every little nuance and really get to grips with the car so less than 2 cents behind which is which normally would be overtaking opportunity depending on the corner but that corner there not really one where you can lunge up the inside unless you're of course alongside already so not needing to go defensive we don't need to go defensive when we don't need to obviously so I'm just trying to really stick to my racing line I know the breaking points just stick to them and this guy shouldn't be able to pass so now 
we're into the second half of the circuit where I'm traditionally stronger and he's, he's actually made a mistake. The gap has just got uh, climbed over a second, so it was about half a second. So I think I might have broken him. He is really desperately, I think, trying to keep up through the hairpin and he's just pushed a little bit too hard over the limit. And the gap's opened up to now 1.2 seconds. So I think I've timed this race perfectly. Just sat behind when I had to, overtook at the right time. And then he's just made that mistake, which has really made things a little bit easier going into this final chicane. Of course, the main thing now is just to not get a penalty as we come through. Going to take it nice and easy. Actually, risking it a lot there. I said take it easy, but I don't think we did. In fact, could have really easily got a penalty because I was only a couple of pixels away from my tyres actually going fully beyond the kerb on the second apex. But we just about get the job done to claim a fine victory. Actually really pleased with that race. Uh, winning just by over a second in the end. The attends a good car around here it seems. Uh, surprised to not see the Lancer Evo a little bit higher up some of these races. But good to see uh, a range of cars. So five, six different cars. Well seven different cars in the top seven which is good to see. That's, that's good uh, for Group 3 racing because obviously some of these cars have been dominated by a single car for a long time. So it's good to see that as well. But uh, once again, I do hope you enjoyed the video as always guys, let me know your thoughts. If you're new to the channel, then do consider subscribing, we're well on the road to 100 million subscribers. We've got our first 100k, but 100 million the next day. But that is the end, uh, another fine victory, victory number 47, my 10th of that day, in fact. But there we go, thank you for watching, as always, I shall see you next time, goodbye.